Well, I'm trying to figure out how to turn this on, you guys. So bear with me here. This is something that I inked using fabric inks. And I have videos on how to do the actual inking process on my YouTube channel. Let's see why. <clears throat> I think I have two things going at once here. Okay, so we are doing StreamYard for the first time and things are, ah, oh, there's the comments. Hi, Virginia. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, it's the very first time, so I'm a little nervous. If you can uh, let me know that you can hear me, that'd be great. You should be able to. And I had myself set up to be on two cameras and be able to switch back and forth real easily, but apparently I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to actually just switch back and forth. Unless I can figure this out one more time. Hi, Judy. Hi, Marisa. Virginia, it's nice to see you all coming together here. And some of you are on YouTube and some of you are on Facebook. Some of you are on my group. Some of you are on my fan page. And isn't this exciting? I can actually go live on multiple platforms at once. And uh, because of that, I'm going to start going a lot more. So yay, you can hear me. And uh, some of you have never done free motion before, so I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of the basics as well as um, dive into this absolutely wonderful project that I did. Sometimes I just turn off the cameras, put on some music, or watch a good movie and just doodle on fabric. And uh, this was one of those times. And so I decided I was going to stitch on it. I still have no idea what to make from it. Maybe you guys can help me figure that out. I was thinking about making a big pillow or another wall hanging, but my house is so full of art on the wall. How many of you have done the inking process? Go ahead and hit a thumbs up and uh, let me know. If you don't know about the inks, um, be sure to, I'll put it in the links or in the comments after the video is done. This fabric was pure white when I started. And this would be the backing fabric and this, the top, if I want to make it into any type of quilt or pillow. But isn't it amazing how it's really soft and it's immediately... Um, able to be laundered without the ink coming off. Part of what we do when we do free motion is we stitch on our fabric and not all threads are created equal. Some will actually make it harder for you to quilt. And uh, so if you work with too thick of a thread when you're just learning, you, you'll have an increased opportunity to have thread shredding above the eye of the needle skip stitches. Um, have any of you ever had your needle break in the middle of doing free motion? 
or nice to see you too, Dolores. And my uh, screen is quite a distance away from me with without any glasses to help me. So bear with me as I squint to see. This has been my longtime favorite for free motion, especially for beginners, because it's extremely thin thread. So when you lay it down or when it is laid down on the fabric, you don't see it as much. And that means that if you make a mistake or your stitches aren't as even as you would like, well, it's not as easy to notice that. And it's also a good idea to match your thread to the actual fabric color should you want your color or your thread not to show up as much. I'm introducing a new thread line, actually two new thread lines to creativefeet.com. And I will have them in the link or in the comments when I get a chance to do that. Or if you have um, joined our my free online school at create.clairowley.com, there is a uh, article that I just recently published yesterday, letting everyone know about this event today and also giving you the links to the new threads. So Invisifil is the thread that I've enjoyed very much, but some people's sewing machines have a harder time dealing with it because it is so fine. It's only 100 weight. So when it goes inside of the bobbin of your machine, some machines think you need to re refill your bobbin because it's so thin. So the sew it's not so bob it is called deco bob deco bob line of thread these are bobbins already wound and you can also get it in the mini king spool sizes as well if you already have the invisifil thread and you don't have any trouble using it on the top but you have trouble with the bobbins this is 20 percent thicker than the deco bob and it's already wound on a bobbin so i'm going to go ahead and use this today I hate to open one of these, but, and the nice thing about these is afterward, you have empty bobbins. I don't know about you, but I can never have enough bobbins in my sewing room. Hi, Karen. Hi, Diane. Hi, Mary. I wish I could read all of what you guys are writing. I'm glad that I popped up on your iPad, Mary. It's good to know. <laughs> the first time doing anything is always a little bit unnerving let's see this one's got someone's got a bobbin loose here all right there we go so this isn't like a permanent box but it is nice that it lets you set your bobbins down inside of it and uh and then it has a little lid so you can go ahead and put it inside of your drawer while you use them up And that is all the way full. And this is a class 15 bobbin. I'm beginning with the class 15 bobbins and ultimately we will be going to more. I got my little mouse and this is a mouse pad that I made using a butterfly fabric and I ironed it on and then stitched over it with the octi hoops and then finished off the outside edge with the pearls and piping foot, putting cording around. And I love it. There we go. So I was going to stitch on this first as I usually do a warm up before I stitch on anything that really matters to me. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the presser foot. For those of you who are not familiar with the Octi Hoops, they're free motion frames that allow us to not use a sewing machine foot when doing free motion and they come they come three to a set I tried to be ready for everything today you can also use the octi hoops with a stabilizer that comes with it that allows you to do free motion embroidery and the stabilizer adheres to the back of the frame and then comes off of it allowing you to use your hoop then afterward for free motion quilting and since this is a free motion quilting tutorial i'm going to go ahead and focus on that today another day we can do embroidery hi from kentucky <laughs> your name doesn't show up if any of you want your picture or your avatar to show up and you've been a 
you've ever gone to streamyard.com, you can join there and then put your avatar in so I can see your picture. Um, hi, Susan, Colorado. That's where my daughter lives. So this thread is dreamy. It's really, really soft. And speaking of thread, those of you who've been waiting for me to get our nylon lingerie thread back in stock, we are in the process of doing the rolls of it now. So it will be very soon that you'll have that back in. Uh, there's many uses it for it, not just lingerie. One of them is it's great for t-shirt quilts. Use it in the bobbin and then children can jump up and down on the bed and the thread doesn't break. It gives with the fabric. It kind of stretches a little bit. It really doesn't stretch, they say, but it takes longer to break than polyester thread. I'm used to pe having people be able to talk back. <laughs> and so it's so quiet in here. I only have my little Tinkerbell over here on her chair to talk to. And as usual, I had issues while getting ready. So I'm going to pick a color. My sewing room is messy. You guys get to see me a little messy. I thought I had it out already. Bear with me a minute while I pick a color. This one will show up nicely. I'm picking some of the heavier threads so that you guys can see them better. We have a 40 weight polyester thread to use and that will show up more and then when I want something to drop more into the fabric we'll use the 100 weight thread and it's been a while since I filmed live so bear with me here and I have a microphone right in front of me so that you can hear me better and it is right in my way so we'll see how this goes now, because we use the octahips, we're gonna go ahead and remove not just the foot, but also the snap-on adapter. And that gives us full view to be able to see the needle. Those of you who've never done free motion before, um, usually you're taught to do it with a free motion foot. And if you feel more comfortable doing that, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. My favorite needle for free motion quilting is the super universal needle. So if you're at creativefeet.com, you would click on universal needles and down on the bottom, you'll see the super universals. And the 9014 is a good size for you to learn on as you're less likely to break it. And also any of your threads will go into the eye of the needle and not get bunched up at the eye as the front groove of a 9014 needle is wider than a 7511, for instance, or 8012. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change to that needle. It also tends to not stick to the batting. So whichever choice of batting you choose is not as important. And speaking of batting, my favorite is the bamboo batting. That would have been fine. It was already yellow. I must have been more ready than I thought. If you've ever done free motion before, did you get sore? You can hit the thumbs up if you got sore. And that's the wrong button. Nope. How long has it been since I've sewn? Not that long ago, I actually was making masks again. I've redesigned my pattern and I will be updating the pattern inside of my school. And remember the school is free. So all you have to do is join createwithclairowley.com. All right. And if you lose your way at the top of creativefeet.com is the, um, the word classes, and that is how you get to the actual school. And you can switch back and forth from one to the other almost seamlessly. 
And what the uh, Create with Claire Rowley is, is a social media platform that is my own private location. And you have a actual um, profile that you create just like you do on Facebook. But we don't talk about anything but sewing in there. One second. I wanted you to be able to see all of the different sizes of the Octi Hoops. I carried them off. I don't know why. And this is the bamboo batting, and we do have it in pre-cut sizes. So you could start out with a crib size or a lap size if you like. We also sell the full size bolt as well, should you want to get a full bolt. The Octubes come with little handles that drop into the actual frames and they stay inside of the frame and they allow you to actually write with your sewing machine. And when you write, you usually put your hands down, don't you? We have a new size batting coming out within the week and it is double the thickness of the bamboo batting that we've currently sold. Now that it's winter and it is absolutely luscious to quilt on. You love your Octi Hoops. I wish I knew your name. There's a fly in here. <laughs> Go figure. Okay. So always practice on a piece of fabric with the same needle, same thread in the needle, same thread in the bobbin. And rather than trying something out with a higher quality threat or with your lower quality products and then switching to your good quality afterward, because when you're learning, if you learn and you have trouble, well, you're, you're more likely to be discouraged the next time you go to do it. Okay. So here we go. What do I do first? Should I do the darks first or should I do the lights first? Well, we're not embroidering, so it's not as important. And I have yellow thread already in the machine. My thread dispenser is where I store my threads in between so I can keep them organized. And we do have the thread dispensers in stock. But I don't have some organization, I drop it all, drop everything all over the floor. Now, when I don't know what I'm going to do with a quilted object, I don't back it. I'm going to go ahead and quilt with the batting beneath the actual fabric. And then that allows you to do whatever you want with it later. And it also allows you to do more thread play without the back of your quilt uh, looking all messy from having too much thread on the bottom. Each one of the octa hoops locks into the other with a, because of the angle of the shape, because of the shape being an octagon shape. So you bring one corner to the corner of the other, and that allows you to move them around on your sewing machine without having to have any clamps or screws. And I'm gonna switch cameras here shortly. It was gonna be really cool. I was gonna be able to show you how to, have me on two screens, but it's not meant to be. So we're gonna go ahead and take the bottom frame and put it beneath and know that it doesn't scratch your sewing machine at all. The bottom of the hoops is really slippery. If any of you have them, you know that, right? They're just like, they're like ice skates on ice. So what that does is it makes your quilt also lift up off the bed of the machine and keeps it from sticking to the machine. This is a traditional position for free motion. I'll do a little bit of it normally for you just because I should show you how regular people do it. And 
going to take my thread tension down one number less than normal. And that is because I'm using a 40 weight, 40 weight thread right now. And this is the lightest of the yellows. I'm going to go ahead and, and go around one of these petals. But before I do, I'm going to bring my needle or lower my needle down into the machine and then bring it back up again and then pull the bobbin thread up. If I can grab it, I should have my glasses and you should as well. If you need them, be sure that you wear your glasses for this. And uh, I'm going to switch now to the other camera so you guys can see the actual sewing part. Let's see. How do I do that? Oh, yeah. I need an assistant. I know. And uh, that is that is something I'm working on, having someone here when I film live so that they can talk in the chat and help me keep up with everything. So I'm going to switch cameras. And now we're on this. Isn't that pretty? If I move this over. There we go. So normal free motion is done with your hands like this and you push down on the bed of the sewing machine while running the machine. The beginning stitch is generally done in a, in a few, few stitches really close to one another, and then you would take and cut your threads. These are one of our scissors that we offer at creativefeet.com. These are micro serrated, imported from Spain, from Appliquick. We do carry all of the AppleQuick products. If you're familiar with, with Rosa from AppleQuick, I just cut my bobbin thread. There we go. So when you sew without a foot and you are the feet dogs, feet dogs normally pull the fabric through. So if you are the feet dogs, it is you that makes the stitches closer or farther apart from one another. So if you don't like the stitches varying like that, well, the easiest way for it not to happen is to not push down against the machine. Because when you push down against a smooth surface, it becomes sticky. So if you have any surface in front of you right now as you're watching that is smooth, push down and slide your fingers and you'll feel that you kind of stick to the actual machine. So what... Uh, that is what causes your stitches to go long and short and long and short. Now, I don't want to cut my needle thread. So I'm going to take and cut my bobbin thread. And the reason I'm doing this, oh, I'm going to have to no matter what, because I got to put the hoops on. If you've ever had a challenge getting your needle th thread to pull up the bobbin thread, it's likely that you use the scissor option on your new fancy machine and they have the bobbin thread cut too short. I hope you guys didn't hear that microphone. I invested in a really good microphone, so you should be able to hear me a lot better than normal. And I cannot wait to really kick this up a notch. I'm trying to choose what day of the week and what time you guys would like me to go live. And I'm planning on going live every week. So if you could tell me in the comments what day and, uh, and time of day, and, and don't forget to say your state. So that helps me, and I'll try to figure out a fair time for all of you. So the medium frame is going to go beneath the octa hoops, and now the, the quilt is lifted up, and it, and it glides very, very easily on the bed of the machine. And then the smaller frame drops on top, and it doesn't attach, it's just loose here. So what makes makes the quilt actually move is simply bringing the corner of the small frame into the corner of the bottom frame and you can't see the bottom frame, but it doesn't matter. You just put your fingers like that and then the whole thing moves without you having to do anything other than that. I got too much stuff on my table. Well, hopefully you won't hear everything fall. Then the, the really, really nice thing is this little handle. And what it does is it allows you to drop 
the handle into one of the holes and to literally draw with your sewing machine. I feel like I don't have a far enough. Well, I didn't check this camera out enough so you can see the handle at the same time. Oh, I guess you can. All right, so now as I lower the presser foot, even though there's no foot, you still have to drop the foot. The tension discs close when the foot is lowered. If you don't do that, then you won't be able to form a stitch and you'll get a bird's nest beneath your quilt. How many of you have gotten a bird's nest underneath your quilt? Uh, it's a big tangle of bobbin thread and or needle thread coming down to the bottom. Hi, Connie. You're from, you're in, you're in Tucson. Well, you're warmer than I am today. You had a hard time finding this? Well, you know what? When I go live, I usually go on and on and on. So, and uh, this is one of my days where I just want to kind of goof off with you guys. So you haven't really missed much other than me kind of rambling. And I'll try to go over again a little bit of the important things. So this is the OctiHoops. This is our small and medium OctiHoop frames combined together. And what I'm doing is what's called thread play. We're not doing embroidery. We're not trying to cover up all of that inking that I did. We're trying to enhance it with some thread. So now I'm gonna cross over here and go to this next one. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna cross I'm going to have to rip this out later. You don't want to go in a dight in a different direction than the actual petal is. Try to think of the petal as a shape. So I'm going to go in later and cut that thread. Come back down here. If you want to go back over an area without making a mess, then you go back right back over the actual stitching that you already did. Now that would normally be challenging to do without the octahoops because you'd be pushing down and with your hands spread apart and pushing down, you don't have nearly the control you do holding on to this little handle here. And for those of you who are physically challenged, know that you can quilt one-handed. So this is me now with just my left hand only, and I'm not good at writing with my left hand, but I can quilt left-handed for some reason. I have a video that explains that. It's quite interesting how your body can adapt to that. I feel like I need to move the camera. And I'm not gonna do that with you looking at this camera. Let's see here. Switch cameras. And I'm gonna bump this one down a little bit so you can see better. You would have gotten dizzy. There we go. I probably bumped it when I was getting ready, started to get stressed out. Are any of you watching actual YouTubers or uh, creators? Have you ever been through a situation like this before? So when doing free motion and you put your hands down on your fabric and move, your elbows are up. With the octi hoops, my elbows are actually down. And that allows me to completely rest all of my upper body so I don't get that pinching of the muscles between the shoulder blades. Partly why I created these was because people were getting fusion surgery in their necks. It was really stressing me out to, because uh, so many of my customers were having this issue. One of my customers actually had seven vertebrae fused together. And what that, what that meant was that she could no longer tip her head down at all. And she was devastated because she couldn't sew at all. And she came to a show and asked if she could meet with me earlier than the show. And I arranged for that. And she was able to, I had her do all of the creative feet and the octi hoops. And she was able to do all of those without tipping her head down. So it's very important that you don't tip your head down like that too much because you cut off the blood supply to the short-term memory center of your brain. 
And uh, if you do have short-term memory loss, they say that if you look really far away and focus on something and do that periodically, it helps to remap the brain, brings your short-term memory back to better working order. And uh, so back to the actual sewing part. I'm going to look also at the chat for a second and see if any of you have any particular question. We are going to do a periodic questions and answers segment. So if you came in late and or you're not really ever late because I never stop. But if you have any questions about anything, be sure to, to comment in the chat and I will I'll look at it now and see if I can answer any of your questions as I switch to the other camera or before I switch to the other camera. Hi. I, I wish I could see all your names. If you were to join and you don't have to join in order to watch me stream live with uh, with StreamYard, but if you join StreamYard, it's free to join and you can create an avatar and put a unique name, then then I'll know what to call you. Otherwise, it's uh, whatever your default name is here. Yes, I I am not, I did not back my quilt. When I do what you call fiber art, I don't back my fabric until I decide what exactly I'm going to do with it. And I can go ahead and do all the thread plays so that the back of whatever it is is softer. If you have a quilt and you quilt all over it with a bunch of thread, like you can, I don't know if you can see that, or my... Oh, that one's hidden by our logo. All right, I'm going to get to this. But here, here's an example. That's right. I, this is why I did this. So this is a butterfly. And then on the back, it's all of that. But if I didn't back this first, then you would just see that on the back. And people would wonder how you did that without getting that. That makes sense? Hi, Deborah from Cross Creek, Florida. I've been to all your states. There's only two I haven't been to. I didn't get to go to Alaska or North Dakota. Been everywhere else. All right. I'm switching cameras so we can get to the sewing part. I didn't see any questions. Hi, Grand Sew. Nice that you're able to watch from Alberta. I've been watching the Heartland show from Canada and I just absolutely love it. All right, here we go. Back to the clothes can. There, now you can see my hand. You know what's interesting is when I look through that camera, it's not as tight as it is when I'm on here. So hopefully it's still in focus, good. All right, I'm doing the most stressful one first, which is a thicker 40 weight thread. So it really, really shows up a lot. I'm gonna just do a little bit of this and then I'll, I'll move on to one of the Invisifil threads so you can see how, how more, how it kind of drops down lower in the fabric. And if you're wondering about the, the lifting of the fabric going up and down, if you even with a foot on it your needle still does that it still kind of pulls the fabric up it's just you can't see it as much because the foot is also in your way so when i'm sewing i'm not looking at the needle i'm actually looking where i'm going just like when you walk you don't look where you are or you would fall down so you look where you're actually going and then it's and then so just try to look where you where you believe I'm heading instead of where I'm at. And this will be easier for you to view. I can put a foot on so it doesn't bounce as much, but then you won't be able to see actually what I'm doing. And isn't it nice that I can actually follow these fine lines and precisely place my stitching where that black is instead of having me kind of making it. This is partly why people think I'm so good at it when I'm at a show because I can see where I'm going. And so you would be better as well if you can see where you're going. Coming out here. Now my hoop is starting to drop off the bed of the machine. Move the machine over. I can't move the machine. <laughs> so what I do is I take my hand beneath it and then my thumb comes in here. So sometimes I hold like this 
which is grabbing the the two put two fingers on either side and a finger in there if you're right left-handed you would hold with your right hand those who are right-handed hold with their left hand and then you write with your dominant hand and my hand is actually resting on the octahoop that's beneath it so the one beneath it is slightly larger than the one on top and so it it nests or drops within the other one but there's no clamps or screws to stretch the quilt out of shape. So when you start with a square with no puckers, you end up with a no puckers quilt. You cannot pucker a quilt without a foot. Pretty cool, huh? And if you're scared that you're gonna break the needle without the foot, know that it's really not a risk. You're not lifting the quilt. So if you've ever taken machine embroidery when it first came out years and years and years ago. I was 16 when I took my first class in uh, free motion. You were taught, I forgot what I was saying, you guys. <laughs> it's been so long, I forgot. Hi, Mary from West Phoenix. So we got a few Arizonans in here today, and I'm from Prescott, Arizona, Prescott Valley, Arizona, for those of you who don't know. And where I lost my train of thought is because I need to move over and I was not paying attention. So I messed up. I don't like messing up, but it happens. No one's going to know unless they're really rude. They won't bring it up, right? So I'm going to push this bottom frame instead of struggling. You just slide the bottom frame over and then the top frame is over. And this is how you continue your path. So there's no stopping and restarting. There's no need to take the fabric out of the hoop because remember, nothing is actually attached to anything and yet everything moves together all because of the shape of the octagon and how they lock together within the hoop. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and you won't get back pain. Try to get myself in a position where you can see better. And I should be wearing my glasses. I also mute the light so that you can see better. So my sewing machine light is actually not on. The camera prefers that. Fun stuff. And So be thinking about what you might, what questions you might have. This is a 9014 universal super non-stretch needle. This is the packet. And this video will be left on YouTube and Facebook afterward for you guys to review. West of Litchfield. The more you comment, like, heart, and share, the better the algorithms are on both Facebook and YouTube. And there we go. And I, I feel terrible because I didn't get to share again with everybody. I sent out an email yesterday and let, the, let everyone in my school know that I was going live, but I was gonna post again, so. I'll get better at this. And I, I always giggle because I remember this lady going, you should really try to be ready before you go live. And I, and I just go, oh my gosh, I got up at five o'clock this morning and I've been learning. And I was already set up, by the way, for this. I already did a rehearsal. And then I was gonna use a different program, but I wanted to try to go to, I was, I've been neglecting my YouTube viewers. I'm so sorry, all of those of you on YouTube that I have people that actually get angry that I go live on Facebook and then they get to only see the pre-recorded versions. Now, if you're wondering if I am thinking about my stitch length, I'm not. It just 
kind of happens like magic. And when I when I progress a little bit more, I'll get as close to the camera as I can so that you can see the stitches. Now they're not all perfect, but they're also not you know dramatically different length because I am not thinking about it. It's very important to not think too much when you do this. Just like you don't really pay attention when you drive your car. I know that sounds funny, but how many of you driven your car and gotten somewhere and you don't remember how you got there or you don't remember the drive and you know you were driving because your hands are on the steering wheel for those of you who think that you can't ever do this if you can drive a car you can certainly do this this is a lot easier than driving a car you have a foot pedal you have rules of the road you have cars coming at you there's no cars coming at you when you do free motion So I'm going to go around here. Free motion is of all of the art for forms that I do. And I do just about everything, including painting rocks. I've been painting rocks during COVID, soothing, giving them as gifts to people who are stressing out a little bit more than others. And um, so I'm going to do some art as well to kind of break it up a little bit. For those of you who want to learn how to paint with oils or want to join in on the kindness rocks, this is so much fun, you guys. <gasps> oh, I wish you guys were all sitting there with your octaves doing it with me. That looked like my, my hand had ink all over it, but it's actually fat, the fabric. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, this is a fabric I actually inked this. I do have videos on how to ink your own fabric on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen it yet, the last one I did was a live airing of inking a mask. But you don't have to apply it to a mask. You can ink any fabric. You can make an entire quilt all on your own with your own artwork. And what's really neat about that is if you've ever bought a fabric that had a design kind of like this, and then you couldn't find any fabric in the store to match it, you know that you can ink with the same exact colors that you used and create your complementary fabrics, solids, polka dots, batik appearing types of designs, and also tie dye if you want to do tie dye. All right, so I'm going to tie this off after saying tie-dye <laughs> it's kind of funny and i'm gonna work the middle of this flower and i'm not cutting my bobbin thread because there's no need to tied a few stitches in place and now i'm going to change to raise the foot even though there's no foot on i have to raise the foot switch cameras here for a minute Yeah, so um, Brenda, if you are, let me switch cameras here. And it's uh, it's nice to see you're you're getting really good at making sure you're in the live feeds. I know you had trouble in the beginning. The um, when I teach like the uh, paper piecing tutorial that I have on my. YouTube channel, I have you press your seams flat, not um, folded over together, but open. And the reason I do is because free motion, when you, when you have lots of seam points coming to one another, you can end up with so much bulk that even with a foot, you can break a needle. So that is one way that I handle thick seams. But um, contrary to what you were saying, if I felt like I was going to break a needle, I would actually put a foot on in a thick area just to help hold that fabric from down from, cause the needle is what happens. The fabric grabs the needle. So even though we can sew without a foot, I'm not saying you only have to, but it certainly makes it easier for you guys to watch me when I don't have a foot on. This is a gray color. Uh, really nice 
if you uh, don't know what color threads to use when you're quilting something. If you have mid-tones, grays are beautiful in uh, different shades of gray. <laughs> they actually blend really nice on your fabric. But the most blendable of all the fabrics is this one here. And I don't know, it is for some reason, it just really blends in with the fabric. And this is khaki. So in all of the threads that we have, if you were to get khaki in each weight, the Invisafil, which is 100 weight, the Deco Bob, which is 80 weight, and then a 40 weight, which is our polyfast thread, then you would have the same color, but you'd able to, you'd be able to drop your thread stitching down to different levels. And it will, it's just, there's something beautiful about having all of the thread be the same color. But when we do thread art, it's fun to mix it up. So right now I have a, like a slate gray color on. Yeah, ruler feet, a ruler conversation for another day, but it's not the healthiest thing you can do with your hands, pushing down on something hard while moving side to side. It can really, really be bad for your hands. So if your body hurts, you're supposed to stop. It's your brain going, stop that. If you don't stop, you can start fusing joints together in your back and your neck and your hands. So if you start feeling like your hands are hurting, you need to stop and try to figure out another position to be in. But this is the actual position I'm in with the octahoops. It's make sure you're not laying on the quilt. That is the most common mistake people make. They go, I can't move it. It won't move because we're laying on it because it's just, you're not used to putting your arms down when doing free motion. So because I didn't cut my bobbin thread, I don't have to really worry too much about tying off and I don't have to bring bobbin thread up. In fact, I can't bring the bobbin thread up. And you know what I did not do? I did not lower my feed dogs. So now I'm going to go ahead and lower them. You hear that drop? And I frequently forget to lower the feed dogs because without a presser foot, the uh, fabric doesn't move, even if the feed dogs are up. So if you have an older machine and you don't have the ability to lower your feed dogs, you still get to play. Okay. This is when I, I really need my glasses. <laughs> And I usually have an extra pair in here, but I've been making wooden pressers for the for you guys. And these are our wooden pressers. This is one of them. This is one of my favorite colors. This is the green hornet color. And you'll see me use them all the time. I use our masks. This is the latest version of my mask. It has uh, a little ring on the back side and is significantly smaller than the original design. So know that if you've made my mask design before, that I'll be putting the new pattern in very shortly and filming another video of that. And, I, and I've reverted back to the elastic in the chin as it stops the mask from falling down when you're talking. Enough of that. We don't really like having to use these, but they're gonna be a part of our lives for a while, I, I fear. Hi, Eileen from Middle, middle Phonian, <laughs> Illinois. I wish I could hear you say that name out, out loud. I'm sure I did a terrible job of it. And whoever you are, Facebook user, I got you hooked on Invisifil. I know, isn't it awesome? And just wait, wait till you try the Deco Bob. A little bit thicker. And uh, so you can't really see the stitching. But what I'm going to do is show you just a little bit. This is uh, one of my favorite products as well. This is the Ultra Glow. So what this is, is, is a light up. And if I had the plug plugged in, I could show you. But and I'm going to be doing a video showing you the comparison of the three different tablets. This is a light up tablet that lets you use your rotary cutter right on top of it. So if you haven't seen this before, it's amazing, but you don't want something like leaning. You don't want, I had my elbow on the edge of it and that can cause uncomfortable behavior. So uncomfortable behavior. Uh, okay, here we go. So see my posture. I I'm sinking onto my table. I'm like, just like having a conversation with you guys. 
and all the muscles in my back are relaxed and try to stay in that resting position. So you're not utilizing all those muscles and they don't get tight. Use your glow every day. I know it's so awesome. I recently got the premium and the premium one is I'm having to think what I'm doing so I can't talk. So the premium one um, is chargeable so I can take it to the couch and sketch on it. I love it. Okay. So since you can't really see what I'm doing, but you can see this is the posture and this is the octi hoops for those of you who've come up later. It has a bottom frame beneath, which is a little bit bigger than the one that's on top. And a lot of people think, well, I'd like to have the biggest possible frame on top. But we don't use our body. We don't move like this. Actually, you can if you want. But the, the precision comes from using this little handle that allows you to drop it into the frame and then write with it with your hands down. Everything is not attached to anything, but when you bring the corner of one into the corner of the other, you can rest your hand on the frame beneath it and draw with your elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I actually say that to myself. I don't just say it when, if you watch me use the octahoops, you'll always hear me say shoulders down or elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I, I have that little mantra that I do before I ever sew. And uh, I'm gonna switch cameras so you can actually see what I'm doing. I don't see any questions. Y'all just not asking many, many questions. All right. I hope you're enjoying this. Saturday, right? It is Saturday. Yeah. Saturday, so along with me. And how, I, I need you to tell me what day of the week would be best. When would you like me to go live? Because I'm going to commit. I'm going to commit to going live at least one day every week. But you guys need to help me pick that day and the best time for you. And I know you're not all from the same place. So you need to say where you're residing from when you when you leave that comment. All right, I'm switching to the close camera. So for those of you who think that you're never gonna be good at free motion, that is only if you continue doing it without the octa -hoops. <laughs> I mean, I, you can even get good without the octa -hoops, but it is a physically more challenging thing. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little like a uh, little bit smaller than quarter inch circles, which is also known as pebbles or sewing pebbles. And I can't really see, I hope you can, because uh, I don't have my glasses. I'm doing my best here without a good light. I'm going to alter this one light so I can see a little better. Hopefully it won't make the camera not be able to see. A little bit of a glare. But now I can see. So I'm making a circle. And you might think that I'm using this hand to steer, but I'm not. I'm using this hand and I'm just doing a little circle with my hand down. Just as if I were drawing on the actual fabric, making a circle, coming around and going opposite, and then going around and opposite. And you just that motion and then you just after you do that a little while and you can actually use the handle just as I did so you can see what I'm doing better it's it's very tempting to lay your hand on the actual quilt so I, I'm scooting and getting my arm underneath the quilt there we go and when you're learning you you tend to think too much so if you can sing like the alphabet while you're doing this, play some music. Another thing that I like to do is I like to watch movies, but not really watch them. So listen to a movie. And what that does is it occupies a part of your brain that makes you think too much. Oh, the spool was falling over on the thread dispenser. Stitch was pulling and it was my spool that got stuck on or didn't I didn't put it down all the way <laughs> you know user error Thursdays and mid-afternoon in Arizona I've been observing how much people are on and know that I know that not all of you like to be in Facebook anymore um, so we're always going live on YouTube as well now should you want to switch it up and 
everything that I go, every time I go live, I will also be storing these under live, a folder called live recordings for uh, YouTube, should you want to watch them later. And I also will be posting the link inside of my school. So you don't even have to go anywhere. You can watch inside of my school. And the school is free to join. This is one of my favorite motions to do on free motion, is these little pebble circles. I wish you could see it better, but when it's all done, it's gonna look better because I didn't make it so you could see while filming. But you can see the texture starting to form and it looks like the center of an actual flower. Isn't that cool? Marin, oh, Maine. You know, I always wanted to go to Maine and I finally went there like two years ago. I had the best time. So pretty there. Saturdays, well, the, the problem with Saturday is then I don't take a day off. So yesterday I kind of took a day off, or not really, because I was actually preparing to film, but my daughter is uh, concerned about me not taking enough time for myself. And she's like, you need to promise yourself to just take your Saturdays off. Don't commit to anything for every Saturday. But sometimes it just works out. Free motion is one of my favorite of all art forms to do. So it's not really hard to get me to, to do this. The Octi Hoops is like goofing off. It's like I'm a little girl and I'm coloring in a coloring book. It's not the stress that you normally have with free motion. Have any of you ever gotten really good at doing free motion? Then um, you know what I'm talking about. You get a rhythm going and it kind of puts you in, in a hypnotic state. And it's, you, you can, uh, I used to say, I get a little tingle on the back of my neck and I had a customer come up to me at a show and she goes, I got the tingle. <laughs> so try not to think when you do this, talk out loud to somebody or, so here I have this like little area that I didn't do anything. So I'm gonna, that's gonna bug me if I don't put something there. Isn't that amazing how nice that texture is? And it, so if you ever wondered if you could quilt without backing, now you know you can. It's absolutely the least stressful of all ways to learn how to free motion quilt because you can slap on a solid piece of fabric on the back side. This is my latest mask because I wanted a mask for evenings. So this will be the, the mask that I teach for the tutorial on the, the new design coming up soon. And then I hope we'll be done with masks. Probably not. I'm going to teach you how to make some fancy ones. And then I have been working on a quilt for a long time. So I'm going to show you my design, which is hanging on the wall, and show you about the piecing and pressing your seams. So if you're, if you're challenged by sewing perfect quarter inch seam allowances, know that you're not alone. And my satin edge foot makes it so you can get these absolutely perfect spot on points. And I've been quilting since I can remember. I'm 50, I'll be 58 in January, you guys. Oh my God, I just realized that today. So I'm gonna take this color off because it's uh, getting dull. And remember, if you don't use your scissor button, instead cut your needle thread. You never have to worry about those carryover stitches being on the back side. So you end up with a cleaner quilt when you're finished on the back. And you don't have to keep tying off your knots. So less, less knots showing. So your quilt is knotty. This is a pretty color. This is one of my favorite colors and it's number 726. I wish they put the names on here, but it's another one that kind of drops drops in. And you can see I did put some purple-ish tints in here. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with that. And so I'm not going to do that yet. Let's see. What should I do now? What part should I do now, you guys? 
Oh, I'm going to go do some orange. Not a pretty one. This is the uh, Polyfast, the new Polyfast. And this is number 3233. Three. I'm going to be doing some kits for you. So the threads will be included and you'll be able to just know that you have all of the exact same ingredients that I have. And did any, have any of you tried the inking yet? You guys are quiet. I really like it when I can hear you guys talk. The last time I went live in a forum where you guys could actually talk verbally, this, somebody popped up inappropriately and I realized how dangerous it can be. So I'm, we're going to be doing live, but I'm probably going to keep that in the school. And as part of the VIP group, um, we'll be doing some private little secret videos on there. I'm going to do just a little bit of the peach in here. I hope I don't regret it. Do you think I'll regret it? Are you guys there? Here we go. So this is a 40 weight thread. Come on. I know you didn't. I must have, I accidentally cut the bobbin after all. So we don't want to do a lot of that because, but it's a nice way to show highlights. And what I did, that's, you should never do. I didn't cut my thread. I held onto them instead of cutting them. So I was stressed out by that. But you can see here, I have a darker ink down here and lighter up here. So I'm kind of just going to toss a little bit of this and this not too much because you can get carried away and think you're doing embroidery and then cover up all the ink that you did, which it's really up to you if you want to do that, but I like the, the ink still showing. And I think a little bit of this peach coming up into the flower and back down again. Can you see that? Are you guys ready for Christmas? I know we just had Thanksgiving, but now in here, I'm, I'm going to hop because I, I'm going to put something in there to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do actually. So I'm hopping. So now I'm tying a little bit of a knot and then coming back. Remember, I'm not pushing down at all. It's very, very loose fingers, very relaxed. If you start feeling tense is because you're pushing down and you do have to forget how to push down. So in the beginning, I, I pushed down too, even though I invented these hoops. So here we go. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be like, oh my goodness. Uh, anytime you have to do free motion without them, it's so much harder. The peach will add just a slight color to it. Yes. And we do want, because of the design, because I do have peach, you know, on the outside, that's somebody mentioned in the school having trouble choosing colors. Bernadette, you're chatting right now. You said you can't chat. I'm trying to learn how to free motion quilt with my octa hoops. Well, you need to just keep trying and perhaps try with a smaller piece of material instead of a bigger quilt until you get the hang of it. And if you, if you make something that doesn't have a lot of importance to you, like I suggest taking fabric and quilting it. And then the intention that you have is to make it into a, a, a bag that you carry dog biscuits in and nobody's ever going to really see it, but just don't use your, your cheap thread and cheap fabric to do that practice because your experience, do you see how I just scooted that? So it was way over here and I just slid my thumb and then the top frame comes in and we're back to going again. 
Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Talk to yourself out loud. Your brain likes that. It makes it so you can remember things. If you ever lost your keys because you put them somewhere, you didn't say out loud where you put them. See how I'm just scooching around? And the closer your hoops are to where you're stitching, the less the needle will raise. I don't think that's proper grammar. <laughs> the needle won't lift as much. Fat quarters. Fat quarters are fun to have. When you ink your own fabric, as long as you don't use a lot of white or metallic, it will behave a lot like what you're seeing now, as there's no metallic or, and there's barely any white. I only put white on these little flowers. Those two colors tend to stick to the needle more. So that would require me to use a free motion foot. And when you use a free motion foot, well, you just can't see as well. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And this is me reminding myself because I was starting to raise one of my elbows. So I think that's enough peach. And I don't know how well you can see that, but it is really very pretty. <laughs> I'm loving it. So switching cameras here. Now, if I want to move over to another area, now I'm going to stitch in place. Well, not quite in place, because if you stay in place, what happens is your needle breaks your thread and then you don't get a knot. So we're going a couple stitches really close and moving just a smidge over and then coming right back where I was. And that's how I tie a knot when doing this type of work. Now, if you're gonna make a quill, a lot of people talk about bringing the, pulling out a, a length of thread, putting it at a hand needle and taking it through and having it just hang within the quilt. You could do that with this technique because we didn't back the back a lot easier than you can do it if you have your back batting and top together. So now I'm going to, I don't like using my, my scissor button when doing free motion because the bobbin threads always cut too short. something else. So now I'm going to pull this out and kind of show you. So this is the front and the back. You can see how perfect the back is. And there's no loops and no carryovers because every time I changed my color, I did not cut my bobbin thread. Well, at least not intentionally that last time I did. So now I'm going to Normally, you would have to move out from the center, right? How many of you have done that before? You're told to start in the middle and work your way out. Why? Anybody want to write that? You guys aren't chatting enough. No question. So you're working on Christmas? Oh, that's right. There's a giveaway. Within two hours following this, I'll be giving somebody $50 worth of product. So I'll be in touch. But you have to have a shared or liked or some kind of reaction. And if you share it to your to your page, well, I would really appreciate that. That'd be great. Hi, Patty. I'm happy you're catching me live too. I know I know I'm gonna get in trouble from the people that I didn't get to give the uh, link to today because I thought I wasn't ready, but I was more ready than I thought. So what I'm going to do is talk about that. So if you normally you're told to start in the middle and work your way out because you get puckers. A lot of people don't know what puckers are. And oh, God, I'm so sorry, you guys. But a pucker is like where your fabric kind of bunches up because you've you're you're sewing from one area and then you're coming back at another area. And because you're pushing down while you're sewing, it causes the fabric to bunch up. But if there's no pushing down, if there's no pucker there, how does the pucker get there? It does not get there, doesn't magically just appear. It gets there from pushing down and moving side to side. So the octahoops eliminate that behavior. And that's why 
all the years I've been using these, which I think it's, it's thir the 13th year. Well, let's see. In 2010? No. 2009, I released the Octi Hoops. They've been around a long time. You must raise the foot when changing thread color because the tension discs are closed when the foot is lowered. So when if you were to just pull the thread out and put another thread in, you would end up with the thread being on the outside of your tension disc, not inside, and the thread will then fall to the bottom and you'll get a big bird's nest, unless you have a computerized machine, because they generally will go, hey, stop, you didn't thread that right. But I've been doing free motion before computerized machines, so without a foot, because there was no foot for free motion until 1980. And it was called the darning foot. So if you're thinking, she's not sewing with a, with a foot, this is crazy. Uh, it's actually the one thing that sewing machines have done the longest is sew without a foot. In fact, the very first sewing machine didn't have a foot and it didn't have feed dogs and it didn't have a bobbin. Yes, paw print bandana, that'd be great. I have some doggy fabric that... Uh, I have a dog bag for walking dogs that I'm, I'm gonna teach. My screen just got kind of light and dark. I don't know if it's, looks like everything's okay. So I just moved, I'm moving to another flower and this is how you can do things quicker. So you could leave the same color thread on and go all the way around or, um, or do one flower at a time changing thread color. You can't get a pucker so, I have this Winnie the Pooh fabric and I did all the Winnie the Poohs at once. And then I went and did all the piglets and went around each one with the color that's appropriate. And there's no puckers because you can't make a pucker with the Octi hoops. So here we go. I'm in the peach. I got peach thread on. I'm in the peach. <laughs> Sorry. When you only talk, when no one talks back and all you do is talk all day long, you start getting wacky. Well, I do anyway. So now I'm going to do more of a looser, longer stitch, and I will switch to the other camera as I try to figure out what I'm going to do, what type of design. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, switch cameras. What are you guys working on? Anybody got a big project they're working on? Brenda sure is chatty. Diane, you have arthritis in your hands and uh, it's a lot easier than it is to do free motion without them because without the octahoops, you push down and that causes pain. It, all of you do, just do this right now. Just take your hands and push down on anything, your leg, your arm, anything, and, and do it until you feel discomfort in the hand that you're pushing down with. You will also feel pain and discomfort go up your arm. And that is your brain saying, stop, stop, stop. Because if you don't, you're going to have fusion of your joints, which is another word for arthritis. Now, some people are do have you know, genetic types of arthritis, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis. And it is much harder to do anything in that situation. And, I, and I'm blessed that I don't have that challenge, but um, after teaching for 37 years and sewing for hours, like up to eight hours a day at shows, I couldn't, I couldn't do free motion for more than 10 minutes without feeling discomfort before I created the Octi Hoops. It is a huge difference and you have 30 days to try them out and 90 days to exchange them for something else if you can't get the hang of it. So we have a, a lot of people that are really doing well with them and, uh, and then the chickens that are just afraid to even try them out. So that's why I'm doing this first in my live series because there's a lot of chickens that have them and they're not using them. But Donna's like saying she's loving hers and uh, know that we are having a secret extra sale. So right now we have a sale going on at creativefeet.com. But if you join my school inside of the school, and remember it's free to join my school, inside of there is a coupon that gives you another 10% discount on top of what it is. Now this is filmed live. 
And this is Thanksgiving weekend of 2020. So that coupon, if you see this after 2020, is not functioning. If the coupon doesn't work, it is because the coupon has been turned off. And it ends Tuesday at midnight. Wednesday, I will be going live as a guest on another Facebook page. And I will announce that in the school. If you want to know everything I'm doing, it is the easiest place for me to send you guys information is inside of my school. I do my best to keep everyone up to date on my newsletter, but it's a lot harder to send a newsletter out than it is to send a message inside of the school. If you're not getting the messages, that means you probably don't have notifications turned on. Just like in Facebook, there's notifications and then you pull, you pull down like the three dots and they changed Facebook. So all your settings that you had, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are no longer valid. So if you are a member of the Claire Rowley Creative Feet Facebook group or the Creative Feet fan page, then you need to recheck your settings and make sure that you're getting all of our notifications so that you're, you know, don't randomly just see this because we tagged it right, but rather you're seeing it because you're actually seeing what we post. The um, same is true on YouTube. So you want to make sure you hit the bell. And then when you hit the bell, you have the ability to follow a variety of different ways, like everything we do or just some of what we do. And, and if you turned off notifications on your computer, then all the notifications that you turned on are no longer going to pop up. So I know I understand not wanting to have all your notifications on because it can get overwhelming. Um, but if you want to have everything and you don't want to have to look everywhere, the school is the, is the one place and it's not in any particular other platform. So you don't have to worry about seeing the news when you want to check out what's going on. And I've, I, unfortunately they don't let us go live in there yet, but I believe they're working on it. So I'm, uh, I don't want to stop, but I need to, so I can show you what I'm doing up close. Switching cameras. So I hope that helped you understand about using this with arthritis. If you have any discomfort when sewing, it's almost always because you're lifting your elbows when you sew and tipping your head down. This is not a healthy position to be in. And you'll notice my machine is up. So it doesn't matter if your machine is up. Now I have very short arms. So my machine is closer to me. So if you're struggling with the octahoops at all, it may be that you have them too close to you and you need to move your sewing machine. Just push your whole sewing machine away from you so that you can actually lay down on the table in this comfortable position. So this is what makes the octahoops so much healthier to use for free motion. And so you can get carried away and go, you know, two, three, four hours and not even get sore. So you might have to set an alarm if you have somewhere to go later on. Hi, Clara. I have seen your name for a long time. It's nice to see you. So you saw me in Paducah? Yeah. I miss seeing you guys at shows. In fact, the, the show, the uh, Rusty Barn Show, which is also now the Quilt Craft Sew Show, they're the ones that are having me on as a guest next Wednesday. And I'll post the uh, link when I get it inside of my Creative Feet Facebook stuff in my MeWe. If you're um, if you're on MeWe, I'm on there as well, and I I'll be posting links to videos in there. And once they allow us to start streaming in there, we'll we'll begin doing that as well. So everybody's moving all around. I'm gonna switch cameras and get you up close. For one of my favorite stitching patterns that I do, which I have, might have to move this light. So just when you think light is what makes it easier to see, the camera does not see it as well if the light is too strong. So we'll see here. There's peach thread on peach fabric. So, and what I do is I, is before quilting, you can take your, your little handle, which feels like a writing instrument in your hand and you can practice the movement that you're going to do 
before you actually do it so that you got that rhythm going in your fingers because that is how we steer this and for the one for i can't remember what your name is on the arthritis when you take a pen and you hold it in your hand writing is painful isn't it these are awesome pens but when you write you push against something hard the table beneath your paper and as you push down you have you can't push down without squeezing the pen so it's that behavior of squeezing the pen and pushing down that makes your hand get sore when you write so with the octi hoops the octi hoops are more like writing with a marker and you can just lightly touch so it's another reason that you can quilt longer without injury to your body without getting sore I feel like that light is still going to be too much. So that's basically what I'm doing is like this swirling design, but I'm cascading out from, from the inside here. So coming up and going back up and coming down and going up and then slide the frame, slide the frame. Make sure your corners meet. That's how this works. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Swirling up. I'm gonna show you how you can even quilt off the fabric's edge. And here we go. It seems like it's gonna pucker, doesn't it? I'm getting closer to the end here. And I was just looking at the camera instead of where I was sewing. So I didn't do a point, I did a round. I got a round bump there instead of a cute little point because I wasn't looking where I was going. I was actually looking at the camera. That's kind of dangerous. Keep your eye on your needle. So here I go, I'm coming off the edge. Now this is something that you can't do without the octa hoops. See, I'm just dancing around the batting. It's just one layer of batting. Come off and you come back on again. So if you thought that the foot helped you, it actually hinders your mobility. This is not stuck in any way, by the way. I didn't base this with anything. This is not fusible batting. Whoops, got to keep it. I want it to be pretty when I'm done. I'm not just making a sample. Let me just scoot over. And you can dance. So you can stitch and come back over instead of having to tie a knot and move over. You just stitch into the batting. Yeah. It's not good to switch things up too much though. Or you won't get a uniform look. So before you begin, choose what you're gonna do, make a decision and follow through with that. Don't Go, I'm gonna do swirls, but here I'm gonna do squares. Then you'll end up not liking your work. So try to keep that same pattern in your mind. Swirly points, pointed swirls is what I'm doing. So I kind of did pebbles in the centers of the flowers. What else can we do here? You can actually do an applique this way as well by the way. On my YouTube channel, there's a snowman mug rug pattern and you can actually applique using a uh, the hoop without a foot. So if you've ever tried to applique something but the pieces were too small to form a stitch on, your, the, the school grand sew is at creativefeet.com. There's a link at the top that says classes, but you can also just right now, or I'll type it, in the uh, chat, I got a, I got a keyboard right here in my sewing cabinet drawer. H T T P S. Let's forget how this goes. I'm doing it right. Oh. 
Oh, no, that's not it. The school is called Create with Claire Rowley, but the uh, ad address is create.clairerowley.com. And my name is spelt without an I. I think that should take you there. And if you can't get there from there, then you go to Creative Feet. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Can I, I can't see that. Oh my goodness. All right. So I have magnifying glasses and I have glasses for far away, but I don't have anything for both at the same time. So can you see the pattern that I followed here? And here's where I messed up, which somebody will probably spot someday. <laughs> but you can see how the swirls come around and make a point and come back. So there's two times or there's different rules that you're told in quilting. Well, there's an interesting view of my face. <laughs> okay. One view or one thing that you're taught is to always start in the middle and push your way out. But originally it was because all quilting patterns used to be design. Let's see. That's the pattern for that. So a pattern, a lot of the quilt patterns are designed to start in the middle. And the idea is to not stop and have to tie a knot and move over. So quilting has always been, let's see how long we can sew without tying a knot. And that is the reasoning from the past before they used feet um, was to like start with a circle and then you come out and I'll try to, I should switch to the other camera again. <laughs> oh, this is not gonna work. Let's see, okay. So you would do a swirl out and, and then a swirl out. And the idea is to never stop the actual sewing process. So this is why they were saying to start in the middle and work your way out. See how that flower was built without picking up the pin? And eventually you end up with a lot of stitching in the middle on this particular design. So then you would go, okay, I'm going to do a pebble. And by the way, I can draw better on a quilt than I can on paper because I don't push down at all on the quilt. So pebbles are done in this manner. I think you can see pretty well. So you do a circle and you come back around again and do a circle and come back around again. And it may seem like it's hard enough to do one circle, but now you're asking me to do double over my circles. But see how my pinky is down and I'm moving my fingers only? That is what we do with the octahoops. So you're, you're doing the exact same movement, small circle, but you're, uh-oh. Somebody's probably delivering something. The joys of going live. Chase, come here, Chase. Okay. So once they came out with a foot to help hold the fabric down, and you can see that you don't need it because I've been quilting this whole time without a foot. But once they came up with the foot, the foot is actually tapping on the fabric as you're moving it around, and it causes little pleats to occur where you're working and the foot is working and, and it's like massaging the surface of the quilt. And then 
you end up with a messy looking quilt. But it's not your fault. It's just you're shown how to do it with a foot. And it makes sense to use a foot because I mean, I always made a joke when I'm at a show. I go, I'm the inventor of the creative feet, which are sewing machine feet. And I'm telling you the best way to quilt is to take your foot off and not use a foot. So what, in essence, the octi hoops are is a giant foot. And its job is to hold the fabric down so that the needle, when it exits, will the fabric stays down. And never leave your tails like that because it can distract you. This is another one of the Appleclick scissors. And for those of you who have arthritis, or your hands get tired. These are, and you'll find a lot of products in creativefeet.com for physically challenged sewers. And that's because I invented my first foot for a blind sewer, the satin edge foot. So she could do everything you can do with a serger with her regular machine. And that's the satin edge foot renamed by one of our fans that hangs out in the creative feet group on facebook bill bob 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 via i think is how his last name <gasps> bob vanilla oh man i'm gonna get harassed bob renamed the foot the magic foot and it caught on so now everyone teases me and calls it the magic foot so these are the oct the uh, apple quick handles that allow you to have a place for every finger and what that does is it takes the strain off the top of your hand and not one finger in particular is bearing the weight of cutting through the fabric. So these are really handy. I know some of you have them and uh, all th there's two sizes of these. The difference is the length of the actual blade. Everything else is the same. So, so when you go to cut, like applique, like if you wanted to do, cut this butterfly out, getting around all those little shapes. These scissors make it easier for you to cut little shapes. And if your your hand can get sore, can't it? Holding onto the fabric while cutting. So if you drop your hand, the scissors don't let go of the fabric and you're able to cut really, really, really tiny precise pieces without injury to your hands and without dropping the fabric and having to find your way back there. Those are the AppleQuick scissors and this is the biggest sale of the year that we have. Remember, you gotta go into Create with Claire Rowley School located at the top of creativefeet.com. Join the school and then you will find the coupon that takes your discount up to 25% off right now. If you go to Creative Feet and you don't join the school first and get that coupon, you'll receive a 15% discount. And this is one of the perks of being one of the members of my school. So we are doing that same pebble movement. And in this sunflower, I'm doing more of the peach. But I don't want to do that. I want to go back to that brown. It's just you can see it better. I'm getting really hungry, you guys. Are you guys having anything for dinner? One time I was on and somebody burnt their dinner. So make sure if you have something cooking that you don't lose track of how much time. Because I am not the normal person here. I can talk for three and a half, four, seven, eight hours straight and never stop talking. Those of you who've seen me at shows know what I'm talking about. Remember, this is not embroidery. We don't want to cover up all the ink. But you can use the OctaHeaps for machine embroidery. And you see here how I did, I don't know if you can see, I did a really big circle and then little ones around it. So varying the sizes of the pebbles also makes them more like pebbles. For those of you who like to do rock painting, I use this same motion when painting rocks with the paintbrush. I do the pebble movement and it creates a really cool effect. Let's see.
Oh yeah, I bet a bunch of you are having Thanksgiving leftovers. I had a very quaint Thanksgiving with my 91 year old father. For those of you who have the hoop at all, I know Brenda, you are one of the lucky ones that has one. The inventor of the hoop at all is my father, Don Rowley, and he is, he just published a book. <laughs> so he brought it over for me to look at. And uh, it's the MGM stars. And it's because my, da my daughter, my great aunt May, taught the MGM students. So it's a book, a candid book about stories of the MGM stars. She taught uh, Shirley Temple and Mickey Rooney and uh, Elizabeth Taylor and many others. So he uh, was gifted with some of her notes from teaching and he incorporated it into a very interesting, unique book. And I will um, probably be talking about it coming up in a newsletter so that y'all can pick up a copy if you like. And then I'm also writing a book, <laughs> several actually, but I'm writing a novel and once the novel is done, then I will be finishing the science of sewing and quilting which is a book I've been working on for years because I got students that are really annoyed that it's taken me this long. So if you want a lot of contrast in your center, you can use a lighter color. And I used peach because peach matches and ties in and brings the color from the outside into the inside. So it incorporates it and that's kind of the idea. So I'm going to do a little bit of a really dark, dark contrasting and then I will probably call it a day only because I'm starving. I didn't get a chance to eat before I started. This is that beautiful color that everyone should have. 726. It's really nice. In fact, most shadows in art are purple. So if you want to create like a shadow appearance, this is a really good color for shadows. Anybody have any questions? Tortilla soup in an instant pot. My daughter gifted me an instant pot. And, oh, sorry. That's not a very good camera angle. We'll switch. There we go. So my daughter gave me an instant pot. If you're not familiar with what they are, they are pressure cookers. And I'm gonna make a pattern for a cover for your instant pot. That'll be one of the projects that I'm gonna do. It was her idea. So she's like, I think you should make a cover for it. Do you agree? Hit the thumbs up if you agree. No, it's, uh, it should be working. The coupon should be working. It worked for other people today. I can't do that because this is another thing. Yeah, I know it works. Um, it definitely worked for people today. So where's my phone? Do you guys know where my phone is? I'm usually filming with it. So maybe that you copied and pasted and have spaces. Yes, my, my great aunt May, her name was Aunt May to me, but it's not her real name. Can't even remember her real name. <laughs> um, she was brilliant. Her life story is fascinating. And uh, she traveled all over the world. Uh, pretty, pretty impressive woman. And I can't run at the mouth. I could run at the mouth, but I shouldn't. But the book is interesting and kind of goes into a little bit of the history of our family. You go to our website and make sure that that... So usually we have a coupon and it doesn't allow you to use another coupon or any other discount with it. 
But this one I definitely tested and made sure it worked. So try it again. Make sure there's no spaces. Make sure your upper and lower case is, is right. And I'm going to look, but other people have done it. So that usually tells you that something we're doing. Come on, Claire. This is something I should do afterward. So you typed it out. I'm going to, I don't know what your name is because it's coming up as just TJPHRI1. But when I'm off of here, I will on a computer be able to do this better. Double check it. And then if you, you're welcome to con, um, use the contact form or email me at orders at creativefeet.com or info at creativefeet.com. And I can assist you with that and we'll figure out what's going on. But people have used the coupon. So it's generally something else is going on and I can help you find out what's going on with that. Oh, we're going with a dark color. And hi, Linda. South Louisiana. I can't say Louisiana right. Usually when I go to different states. Hi, Tina. Okay. So Tina, after this, let's uh, find out what's going on and I'll help you get in there. Sometimes I have actually helped people join the school and take control of their computer for them and help them get set up. I can't do that all the time, but sometimes it, it has been necessary because I have no idea where the spool went, you guys. <laughs> oh no. Just got to drop it. Find it later. So the new, you're, you're, uh, you're going to need the direct link anyway to the threads because our webmaster added all the threads, but he didn't make it show up in our supplies page. It will be fixed soon, but he doesn't work weekends. So probably mid morning on Monday, all of the proper links will be fixed. In the meantime, the document is inside the school. It's possible that I didn't, it's possible that that somewhere I messed up on the coupon because I created the document and then I had to change the coupon for some reason. So that could be it, Tina. There's the actual article that I wrote and then I just posted a, well, let's just stop talking about it. Get back to the sewing part and I will help you shortly. It's almost four. I've almost been going two hours. Lowering the foot is very important, as mentioned before. Always lower the foot, even though we are not using a foot. Oh, I helped you get on Zoom, Brenda. Yeah. And now we have StreamYard, which is what I'm using today. Check and rethread the upper thread. And that is one of the things that some people have happened a lot with the invisible thread. So the deco bob is thicker. I didn't think it was sewing and it was. So I just did two pebbles in a spot. And this is the dark color. Oh, I'm going to change to the other camera angle so you can see. Every time I go live, I get a little bit better and technology changes. And so it's a constant learning process. And I'm really hoping that this is going to be it. Now that so many people are going, getting used to things like Zoom, you guys aren't as afraid and you're learning. And so I think going in our live chats, All right, I promise I'll get you that coupon code like within 15 minutes following when I say goodbye. And I will post it in the in the uh, comments of everywhere that this is airing. 
So for any of you that have been trying to get on there and know that this coupon code expires midnight on Tuesday. And we don't usually go this low of a, or this high of a discount. I don't know who you are, who just said, hey, lady, good to see you. Um, if you guys want to be able to be seen when you come into uh, the live feed like this, you're going to go to streamyard.com and join. It's free to join. And then you can put your name and picture so that when we go live, I can see you. And unless you're, yeah, you're coming from Facebook. So it's nice to see all the YouTubers. A lot of YouTubers. I'm so sorry I've neglected you all on live feeds. So now I'm following that line. This would be very, very difficult. Have any of you ever done free motion and tried to follow a line before? Have you ever gone down a line and come back up on a line before? It is very difficult when your hands are like this and you're following with your elbows in the air. So with the octa hoops, we have the little handle. And I'm looking not at the needle, but about a quarter inch ahead of where I'm going, just like you do when you're walking. You look where you're going, not where you're at. Don't look at that needle because it's kind of like golf. Any of you golf? I don't know. I just thought of golf, golfing. Whoopsie. I made a mistake. There we go. So I'm following the line, scooting it up, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I wasn't centered, I wasn't centered with my needle, which, which is what was going on. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. This is something I say every time I start, and if I don't, then I mess up. So you see how important it is to talk to yourself? We are on, um, yeah, Mighty Networks is where my school is built. It's a platform, kind of like Facebook is a platform, except for it's a private school within the actual platform. So when you're joining the actual Mighty Networks, they have an app. And so you can actually have access to me. Like you're just chatting, you're texting your, your family, you text, you can text me and you don't wake me up. Don't worry. My phone is set to be quiet unless my daughter or son or father, everybody else. I look at my phone so often I don't have to have it make noise. So at night, there's no risk of you actually waking me up. So then I decided to make a leaf pattern. Wish you could see that better. So I better do that again. And I felt that way because there's green splatters here. Freckles is what I call them. So if you do inking, you're going to be worried so much about spilling it. So spill it first. Spray, spray little dots everywhere. And then it's normal to have the dots. It takes a lot of the stress out of the inking process. And this is a very affordable ink available at creativefeet.com as well. Know that we're out of white right now. It's been out because of the COVID. And if, so if any of you were waiting and then couldn't wait any longer and canceled your order until we got it in, I haven't been able to let everyone know that we got all the other colors in again. So you'll just be waiting for white. And know that white is the sticky color. I found that to be true of every ink I ever tried. So remember, this is the purple, and it's great for shadows. So I'm coming in, and I'm going to do pebbles in the shadows. And there's this big pebble or big shadow right here. But I think... I need to do a different shape than what I did in, in the circles. So I think I'm going to go back and forth. But as I go back and forth, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not zigzagging. I'm not going like that. I'm coming back over the same spot that I was on and then moving up, going over, coming right back over my spot, coming up, going over. So it has a different shape that actually 
sets it lower than this. And then to me, it looks like a mistake that I made in my inking, but there's no mistakes in art. Thank you, Kathy. I'm so glad you love my stuff. I love making it so you guys can do things that you would have had a harder time doing. So now I just echo quilted around that petal because instinctually I tend to do that, but I forgot I'm, I'm doing art. So I don't want to mess up the flower over here. Paying attention to what you're doing, deciding what you're going to do before you begin is important. If you're just joining us now, this is my octi hoop that I'm quilting with. And if you're thinking it looks weird, it's because there's no foot on the sewing machine. This is the foot and it's not a single frame. It's two frames. There's one beneath it that is not attached to the other one. The bottom of these frames are really slippery. So they slide over the body of your machine and they don't scratch your sewing machine if, if you're worried about that at all. Um, let's see. If you don't know who I am, I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. My name is Claire Rowley, as it says at the top of the screen, I believe. Should, unless I opened up a different screen. I think that's what I did. I created two feeds today and I didn't show up for the other one. <laughs> I'll get this down. I will learn this. So here we have another like shadowy area. And that would even be kind of cool to go in with even maybe a darker shade of purple or another shade of gray. All right. So I'm just going to keep on quilting this thing. But at some point I have to stop, don't I? What time is it? I've almost been, okay, I'm going to go all the way to four and I'm in Arizona. So we never change time, by the way. Here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, outline one of these daisies. See, I'm just scooting over and there's no, nothing holding these two fabrics together. If you feel the need for a, Something to hold the fabrics together. Now I'm in the white and white is sticky. Remember I said white ink is sticky. So it's better to not ink. Start with white fabric and don't ink the white. Leave the white fabric white. Or just know that it's going to move more with the needle. The metallic inks will do the same thing. And I wish I could provide you this fabric, but I inked it. It is something that I'm thinking about though, coming up with uh, my fabric. I ink it and then get it printed and that way you can quilt something I have inked. What do you think? Do you think that would be good? Would you like to have had this fabric to, to stitch on with me? If you don't make comments, I won't know what you're thinking. And there we go. Okay, so this last center, I'm going to tie a knot because I think it would be better to do that with another color instead of doing everything in gray. You can never have enough scissors around. Raise the foot, even though there's no foot, pull the thread out a little bit. Cut just your needle thread, and that way you're still connected to the quilt with your bobbin thread. The fabric bounces more when I'm sewing over white ink. And if you don't want the fabric to bounce as much, using a thinner needle, but when you're learning, it's safer to use a thicker needle. This thread is 100 weight, so you can go down to even in a uh, tin needle, but know that there is a higher risk of breaking needles when you go that small. That will definitely reduce the amount of bouncing that the fabric does. If you use a foot, remember the foot is in your way, so you can't really see. And the fabric does lift with the foot as well. So it's not only lifting because of the foot not being there. And if you get the hoop closer, to the area that you're going to sew. So with the frame 
closer like that flower closer to the frame itself there's less of the fabric lifting and the tendency is when people start is to center things in the middle of the frame so that you'll end up with more bouncing if you do that so start with start with a foot if you feel more comfortable as well until you feel brave enough to let let go of the foot and then you'll see that your stitch quality is, is beautiful even though you're not using a foot What is the name of the app? Yes, it is. We do, we're in the Apple store. Uh, and the, it's the Mighty Networks is the app that you want. But if you just go to my actual school, there's a get the app. Click here to get the app and you put your cell phone in and then it sends you the link. But it's the Mighty Networks. And then once you're in there, you search for create with Claire Rowley. That is the name of my actual school. And know that I'm an expert in all types of sewing, industrial and domestic, garment sewing, factories. I used to set up factories with industrial machines. Yeah, uh, Mar Martha Pullen show was fun. I was disappointed when that one ended. And Martha's doing really well right now. For those of you who know that she was ill. She's fun to follow on Facebook. She has a new grandbaby. RFD fabric. You're going to have to not use the initials with me. RFD. Yeah, you can use stamps with the ink as well. Hi, Lynn. Oh, my God. This is the woman that called me the sewing queen. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's so nice to have you join me. Let's see. Lynn Coleman is a troublemaker. I was at a show and I had this purple jacket that I'd made and I, I, I put on a, a lapel or I created a placket and had beads and it was, it was royal purple. And so she was, she was like, oh, you look like a queen. And then all of a sudden I look up and there's a whole bunch of ladies and they all bowed to me to go, the sewing queen. <laughs> she was troublemaker. <laughs> all right. What do you think? Do you think I should go darker? On the circle, it's a daisy. I should go lighter, huh? And then, uh, oh, I'm like, I could, I should stop. I love hanging out with you guys. Can you tell? I always have a hard time ending my live feeds. And then people watch the live feed after, afterward, and they're like, my God, you just keep going and going. I made chicken for Thanksgiving because there were going to be more people that were going to show up, but they couldn't. And um, so I made two chickens. This is something that I want to do is to do a cooking with Claire segment as well. There's going to be art an art YouTube channel and a cooking art YouTube channel. And uh, eventually I'll sleep. So now I'm going to put it back on the on the close-up camera and this will be probably the last thing that I'll do and we're going to do a questions and answers segment so get your questions ready it doesn't matter what type of sewing you're wondering about feel free to ask and I'll be getting the coupon code worked out for anyone who may have had trouble Remember not to embroider your quilting. Quilting is like tracing or drawing lines and embroidery is filling it in. And that I think I won't do that on the next daisy because it covered up too much of the yellow. So here we have an, op an option to stitch my way over to the next daisy or to tie a knot and hop over. And I'm thinking... This would be a good place to echo quilt. And echo quilt quilting is 
kind of like how it sounds. You sew a distance away from where you your stitching line was and try to keep the distance the exact same distance away. Remember that as you're watching me quilt, by the way, the whoever was mentioning the fabric popping or lifting, that I'm not looking at the needle. And just like when you're driving a car and somebody's steering and you think they're getting too close to the curb, it's because you're looking where you think they should be going instead of where they're looking. And so anticipating where I'm looking, it's forcing you to look at the needle, but know that I'm always, I'm already looking way over here. So it doesn't really affect my vision at all that it's pop, that it's lifting like that. And you can know that if you're using a free motion foot, you actually can't see the fabric through the foot. So this is a much more accurate way of doing free motion and it's so much fun. I promised that I would do the sequins and ribbon foot and give it a special segment coming up soon. We'll do some yarn sewing with it and you can actually sew yarn on a quilt. All right, I'm gonna stop because I'm starting to just think of it as quilting and not a pattern that I'm following. And for those of you who are, weren't watching from the beginning, these are the two frames. So there's three in the set. The next one up is considerably bigger and here it is. And if you're worrying about them getting struck by the needle, you can see that they pass underneath the needle, even where there's no channel. But I did provide channels for you to slide your foot underneath. So if you use ruler feet, you should be able to get it under there. And if you have a, a tabletop quilter, you can use an Allen wrench and remove the foot and you won't get a pucker ever again on your mid-arm machine. If you don't know what a mid-arm machine is, you don't have one. Let's see. So I don't know if you can see that well. Light it up. See how pretty that is, you guys? It's addicting. All right. I'm getting tired. Let's see, have any questions? Oh, you can stitch through all three layers. However, when I'm doing work like this, I don't. I sew with nothing on the back. And I use bamboo batting, which is why it, it's stuck so well. See how it's staying together and there's nothing holding the batting to the fabric. It's just got a real high level of static cling. We do have our liquid-based water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle that you can use to hold your fabrics together. This eliminates safety pinning. It eliminates basting stitches. It's a water-soluble stabilizer. It washes out when you wash it out, and you can stop hurting yourself trying to safety pin quilts together. A little dot of glue, which remember, it's not really a glue, a little dot. And then you just slide your finger across it and lay it down on your fabric and it holds the two together until it is washed. So it's fabulous. And you, you don't have to worry about breaking your needle on any pins. So if you're a beginner quilter, the liquid based glue is uh, what I, I use for a lot of different things. I also use it for piecing. If you have ever done a jelly roll quilt, anybody ever do one? And you start at the top and you work your way down sewing one strip after another and then you end up with them all straight at the top and then like angled on the bottom even though they were the same size when they started. If you use the liquid base glue and glue them together first, they don't stretch. So you can do that. You can start at the top and work your way across instead of having to flip it because that is the solution for jelly roll piecing is to 
So one row, flip it over, go the opposite direction, flip it over, go the opposite direction. Well, my mind does not work very well flipping things over. So I tend to use the liquid base glue whenever I want accuracy. So I did use it on my quilt that I'm working on. This is part of a quilt square. It's on my wall. And the batting, the bamboo batting makes the best design wall ever because it just, it just sticks. Fabrics just stick to it. This is the back side. And it's just a bunch of stitching. So another really fun quilting technique that you can do is to use the backing. And it's, it, I didn't not do backing because it, it can't, because it certainly can. You can quilt through four layers of batting, which is one of the videos I show on my YouTube channel, how to sew through four layers of batting and the backing and the top with the octahoops without a foot. It is quite, it is quite amazing what this, what the octahoops make possible for you. And um, starting to have trouble thinking. So yeah, the basting glue is a, is a favorite. People are like, when I go to shows, they go, tell me you got the glue. I need the glue, <laughs> but it's not really glue. Water soluble stabilizer. Use it for making masks as well. You pleat your pleats and you can glue the pleats down, glue all your pieces together before you sew and nothing shifts on you. Let's see. All right. Oh, I can just keep going. Oh, that's right. Any questions? What machine am I using? You haven't seen one like this before? This is the Baby Lock Crescendo. And this is my jungle machine. And it didn't used to have any chips on it, but I took it to shows. I'm going to be touching it up soon. I do have the Baby Lock um, Destiny as well. It has a lot of real estate on it. And I, I only sew on machines that are painted because that's it's one of the things I'm known for because everything I make works on all sewing machines. So it doesn't matter what machine you have. That's why my machines are painted. Other one, if you ever saw me on the It's So Easy show, I did sew on their plain white machine. It was very weird. <laughs> okay. The frame is called the Octi Hoops and the Octi Hoops are found at creativefeet.com. And I'll retype that in the use liquid base all the time. I know it's just, you never need a pin ever again. And if you do, then this is something else we offer. And we do have them in stock right now. They don't stay in stock very long. This is like, uh, reminds me of Star Wars and all the air, all the aircraft come in. Okay. So these are your clips and these are special clips and they just dock right in there. Just docks them. And this, lifts up so you can store stuff inside of there as well. Be a lot neater than this. And it's got real good weight to it. Excuse me. Bamboo batting fuzz. Okay, so Gloria, yeah, you don't need a foot. You can use a foot. But know that if you do, it's in your way, so you can't see what you're doing. And uh, so that's one of the main features of the Octi Hoops is you don't need a foot. Oh, I was going to type that. I'm getting my keyboard. Where is it? Oh. I'm not used to having a keyboard on my sewing table. This is a new setup. I got a, whoops, a computer just for streaming. I just typed a bunch of zeros. Excuse me. There we go. When I um, usually edit my live feeds and get rid of all this kind of stuff, but um, I also don't film as much as a result. So we're going to be doing a lot more live like this. Now that you all know behind the scenes means that we have keyboards and we have microphones with extensions to make it so you can hear. Um, 
instead of trying to make it look like a television show and there's a director and there's a whole bunch of cameras like it was when I was on the Home Shopping Network, you used to have seven cameras and they would whisper in your ear and tell you which camera to look at. I just have me and my dog. So the um, not using a foot is important. And I'm just getting the hang of using StreamYard, so I'm, I'm hesitant to go to my website right now because I typed it twice. Oh, no, it's on YouTube, too. It's weird seeing my posts three times. I am, uh, you know, the shows haven't all reached out to me, but um, it's, it's uh, challenging to uh, be a part of all of these different virtual shows. International Quilt Festival for Houston is uh, one that I'm, I would like to do. Puyallup's having one. I didn't know that, so I'll have to look. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. I got to mute myself for a second. <coughs> I had, I had to cough. Okay. It's because I haven't drank any water. Here we go. This is my water bottle and I painted it. <laughs> so... Like I painted my sewing machine. Can always tell my stuff apart from other people's. Okay, so the uh, Create with Claire Rowley is the school where you go to get the coupon to get a bigger discount than what's showing on our website right now. So if you go to creativefeet.com right now, you're going to get 15% off your entire order without entering a coupon. But with uh, the coupon that you get, and the whole point is I'm trying to get you guys to join my school. So I'm kind of like extorting it from you. So if you want another 10% off for a total of 25%, you have to join my school and it costs you nothing to join my school. It's just easier for me to corral you all into one area. I can send out messages to you easier in there than using any other platform. And uh, videos will be stored in there. I have a How to Paint Your Sewing Machine DVD, and I did just upload the video to YouTube. So you will be able to take the How to Paint Your Sewing Machine class inside of the school with live chats with me coming up soon because people aren't using DVDs anymore. So that's something that's coming up. Also, the Creative Feet um, extensive course will be coming soon now that I'm set up like this. So I'll be able to film my courses a lot faster because I can switch from camera to camera. Editing some editing a four hour or four minute um, video can take up to two to three days. So doing it live, it'll be a little bit rougher like this. Uh, I'll be able to edit out in-betweens, but it's going to make it a lot faster for me to edit now that I have multiple cameras set up without having to leave my sewing room and move things around. So um, you go to at the top of creativefeet.com. If I share my screen, I can share my screen. It's easier to do that with two screens. Make sure nothing inappropriate is up. Maybe I'll go big on here. All right, so I'm sharing my screen to show you guys what to do. So, okay. This is my first time sharing my screen in this particular program. And I cracked my screen, so it was brand new. I cracked it immediately. Oh, I have to open a new one. Okay. I have no idea what you guys are seeing, so sorry if it's weird. I might not have might be able to do that. So. So hopefully you're seeing me open up my website. Somebody say yes or no in the uh, stream for me. And boy, that's even smaller than before. I can't even read your comment. 
I'll look inside of Facebook on my phone and see. My friend Rosa from Appliquick just posted a picture on the water. She lives right on the ocean. Let's see here. Don't get distracted. My dog is snoring. Can you hear it? Okay. Yeah, you can see my screen. All right, cool. This is good to know. This is going to be really cool. I didn't share my sound. So right up here, there's classes and you just go to classes. And then you join. And after you've joined, which I've already, I'm already a member, but when you go to join, there's a get the app. Let's see. This talks a little bit about who I am. See, so right at the, where you're joining, where you see me at the top there, um, and it says join, slide down, slide down and you'll see keep up with create with Claire Rowley on the go and you put your phone number right in there dot, 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 dot. and then it'll text you the app and when you come after you download the app and enter it then you got to put in that you're going to you're going to you're joining create with Claire Rowley that is the name of my school see how it says it up here too create with Claire Rowley is the name of my school I'm already a member. So then the next time you go in, you would sign in. And I don't recommend you sign in with Facebook, but you can if you want. I have no idea what my sign in is, you guys. This is the kind of stuff you do behind the scenes. And I think it does a dot. It's a lot for the computers to do this. It's so awesome. StreamYard is making this possible. I tried to do this before and, and everything would crash and my voice wasn't synced with my mouth and all kinds of different things. So now I'm logged in and, uh, it's like slow. There we go. So these are, this is a social media platform. And when you're, so a bunch of people are right here. So inside of here, you go to topics. And we have a coupon, coupons and special offers. And this is where I put the, CWC 25 off. And I can't type it in the chat right now because I'm using my screen. So, oh, here, I can type it in here. So this is the coupon. You're supposed to join the school to get the coupon. <laughs> this defeats the whole purpose of going to the school to get it. And then you copy it. And when you copy it, make sure you don't copy spaces. She just tried it and said it was invalid. So you're not the only one saying that. Let me see if I can't make it valid right now. Except that you're all going to see me do it. Let's see. I don't understand because it was working. Close your eyes, you guys. I'm just joking. I wonder how many of you did. Just saying. Come on, computer. I know you're doing a lot. It's weird because I know people used it. So maybe I have the wrong expiration on it.
sure enough, it expired today. Why did it do that? It's so weird. I'm about to, to make it work again. <laughs> Okay, should be working. Let's see here. I was falling asleep when I was setting this up because I worked really late to do it. And I will now see if it works by actually testing it out on my own cart. So right now it's reflecting the 15%. Is that a checkout? And then you enter your special discount. Yep, it's working now. Yep, yep. So sorry, you guys. I gotta tell everyone in there. Now everyone that commented asking about the coupon is all getting a message saying the coupon is working. Kind of like Facebook, but it's just me and you guys all cuddled up in my school. And so there was nothing wrong with the coupon. It was just me. <laughs> oh, so sorry. So when you're in here, you've got your settings. So you click on your own picture and I hope you'll put your picture in there. See, some people don't put their picture in there, but this is really fun for us to get to know one another. And I do require you have a picture when we do a chat. No, I don't. <laughs> I thought I could pressure you. Okay. Click on your face and then you go to, you got your settings. That's how you set up your profile. And down here you got network settings. And I think it's in network settings that you, it's not going to look the same for you as it is for me. No, that you don't have that one. You have your settings. So you go into your settings and then you got notifications. And you want to do both mobile and email. In case you ever turn off your mobile net notifications and then we're going live and you're part of a class. So when you're part of a class, it's a Zoom class, although I may change to StreamYard um, and not have Zoom. We'll see. But you can see I have it all turned on, but then it's my, my website. And then there's classes and there's courses as well. The courses, there's some hidden, they're, they're about to open. And then there's the, so if you look over here, you got your creator courses. And these are the things where you charge, I charge money for these. And so, yeah, I'd have to charge money for some things so that we can, I can keep providing things to you. And at some point I'm going to retire. And when I retire, this school will be open and have all of my knowledge in one place. That's my goal. Because Nancy Zeman, she was, she regretted not being able to get everything out of her head. So we have creator groups. These are generally free. Although this is where you can join the VIP group, which helps me buy computers and cameras and get good microphones and provide you with the free content. It hasn't been open very long. Um, once the COVID hit, I, just, I had the school already and then COVID hit and kind of messed everything up. But you can see here that this is where people join to chat. This is the Octahute group and everyone in here should be watching today's episode because this is where they, they want to learn more about the Octahutes. And then you, they chat with one another, so you get to know each other. And then you can private message me, but I really like it if you ask questions in the group, because other people benefit from it. 
some people are afraid they're afraid that I will be upset if they post something because they're they're thinking there must be something wrong <laughs> with some I don't know I do not mind so you would type if you have an octahoop question you would type it right here so it was so much fun You have the ability to, to do to post pictures and I don't really have any pictures in this computer because it's brand new and I think they have I think you can don't you have the cute the little smiley faces in some areas there's uh, the emoticons or whatever they're called post and then I can send it out to everyone or just people in the group, you would not have that. You would just post and it's, it just goes, I'm not going to notify everybody because some people are going to be upset with me. They didn't get to join in. So then you're like, okay, well, how do I get out of here? And then you go back to network. You have the ability to follow topics and I highly recommend you do this. Because sometimes almost everyone's a member of the creative feet topic. And that is the one that I, if I don't know, I, I, I usually always send out a message on this topic. So make sure you join creative feet and then you'll, you won't lose anything. But you can see fiber art here. This is um, one of the courses that I taught and mighty networks messed up something at one point. And they forced me to have to redo this and it's I still haven't gotten it done but this is one of the show you how you can watch videos in the school so if you don't want to have to go anywhere you can actually watch it right here in the school isn't that neat and this is the how I painted that fabric how I inked my fabric before I quilted it today so this was another live session and we did it on Facebook and that's a lot for my computer to deal with. But this was a mask that I ended up making for my chiropractor's wife. And uh, so you can watch that video if you want. And that's the goal, to have every video that I created in here in a logical place for you. Then we go, okay, I want to go back to the website. Right here is go back to Creative Feet site. So you're pretty much seamless just clicking in the school and back so you can watch a video and go, okay, I need that supply and then take you right back out into here. This is uh, broken down by categories. So go in the product categories, we've got creative feet. And the first foot is the, this is my, not my first invention, but because my first invention was a foot for a serger for sewing beads. But this is the satin edge foot, also known as the magic foot. And this is the one that I designed for the bind lady. And inside of these pages, you'll see videos once again on our website. So you don't have to leave our website to watch videos. And this one helps you sew perfect quarter inch seam allowances and then about 27 other things. So because our feet do so much, we have things broken down. Uh, one foot does 27 things, another foot does 20 something things. Actually, we're well over 300 techniques. You just don't know it yet. That's why I'm building the Creative Feet Extensive course. Meanwhile, this is where you get the information, the educational special, which is a book and a video. Your choice of getting it in print or getting it on USB. So the you can get a, ver a variety of different ways of getting it. And then there is a new version of the video opening soon in the school you just don't know it yet um, so i'm going to i'm making it so that you can have that original video inside of the school broken down by chapter so i'm going to stop sharing this screen i think i can't tell if you guys are oh yeah let me see what if anyone posted anything 
Oh, my screen too small? I think you guys got it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. If you need any help with any of that, if you need any help doing, you know, getting logged in or anything, I'm going to be creating a video on how to join the school because the Mighty Networks is mostly, you know, set up for people like me to create a school. And I'm not the only sewing educator in there either. A lot of us, because of the shows, uh, not being able to go to them anymore. And who knows when you guys will even feel brave enough to attend one. All I know is at shows, I'm usually like surrounded by, you know, 150 people. In fact, a lot of shows use a picture of my booth for their ads because there's just so many people around and you can barely see the sewing machine in the mix. Um, I don't know when I'll feel safe to, uh, to, to attend a show, but we do plan on doing our own events and that was where we were going next anyway. So know that that's coming. The school, we'll get y'all getting all, I'm getting y'all organized so that we can offer you more and we will be doing live events up here in a hotel that we have a casino. And you'll have like access to the sewing room 24 hours so that if you're up at three in the morning, you feel like sewing, you can, you can sew. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Because I'm going to end this video so that I can eat. And uh, I want to keep sewing though. If I had eaten lunch, I would have, my daughter would be all over me <laughs> for not eating. So this is what we were working on. For those of you who might be coming in late, know that this video will be up on YouTube and up on Facebook after I hang up on you. And uh, I loved spending this time with you. We're going to be going live weekly. I'll announce the week or the day of the week and the time as soon as I can. And I'm going to commit to that now that I'm not traveling all over the, the globe. I can actually commit to something like this. So, and be sure to join the school. I guess I'm going to end the chat now. All right. Yeah, it feels like it's, it feels like today's Sunday because Yesterday was Black Friday. And thank you for supporting small business as I'm definitely a small business. I appreciate your purchases and um, I'm going to work really hard to get the Creative Feet Extensive open because I know a lot of you have had our feet for years and you're dying to know what else they can do. Like if on piping, so if you want to put piping on something, I have like probably two how two hours of piping information to give you hard to imagine see iris loves her octa hoops for those of you who are scared i would love for you to see that's the school is all about you guys sharing and and you know i think uh, you guys could share a lot more in there so be sure to share pictures of the stuff that you guys create that's part of the fun bye lynn Mwah. Lynn made a king size quilt with the hexes. I know that uh, we, uh, it's insane. It's huge. And she shared the picture inside of our Facebook group. It's, it made so many people feel inspired. You have no idea how much you inspire others and nobody's really looking for your flaws. Not, not in my space. In our places, everybody is uh, sweet and loving and understanding and not judging. So I, uh, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know it was just been a challenging year all around. Know that my heart is with you and I can't wait until we get to the other side of this so we can get back to normal and, uh, God bless all of you and God bless the United States and God bless the world. We're all in, we're all struggling through this. Um, I love you so much. 
And I thank you so much for supporting me for the last 32 years at Creative Feet and um, 37 years of teaching. And I still just love sewing. So I hope you love it as much as I do. Bye. Mwah. <laughs> One more click. One more kiss. Bye.